We've all had that moment. You just lie down after a hard day of work and realize, oh, hamburgers. I forgot to plug in my phone. If only I could just magically charge it somewhere near my charger. Well, that's actually a thing. But how in the world do you get electricity to travel over distances further than what you get with current wireless charging pads that your phone has to physically sit on? Well, to start off, it helps to understand why something like Qi charging or even electric toothbrush charger has to have a gadget basically touching it in order to transfer power. These types of chargers work using a principle called electromagnetic induction. You see, when you plug in a wireless charger, it creates a current in a loop of wire inside the charging pad. This current in turn generates a magnetic field that can actually cause current to flow inside another nearby coil, such as the one inside the charging spot on your phone or that electric toothbrush. And although this isn't too difficult to implement, the issue is that it only works over very short distances. In fact, the distances between the charger and the device has to be much shorter than the diameter of the coil in order for it to work properly. We're talking like millimeters, maybe even less here. So one form of distance charging takes the induction mechanism and improves it by creating a resonance coupling. You see, currents connected to a capacitor, like inside a wireless charger, naturally have their current change direction due to the charge flowing from one end to the other, going through the coil and then accumulating in the other end, making the current then reverse itself. This is called oscillation, and the circuits have a natural frequency at which they'll oscillate. So due to some pretty complicated physics that's like way beyond the scope of this video, if you have two coils that oscillate at the same frequency, they will resonate. And that energy will actually travel more directly between them rather than just kind of going all over the place like with a regular inductive coil. This means instead of having to place a gadget right on top of the charger, the charger would instead work over a distance of several centimeters, even up to tens of centimeters with larger coils working over longer distances. This could prove useful not only for charging phones and laptops by putting them into a charging basket or something like that. So even if they're just like a nearby charger and it's on your desk, it still charges perfectly fine, but also for keeping low power objects such as wireless mice, smart home devices, all of that could just be perpetually powered with no wires at all. And because of their improved efficiency, resonant coupling can also be used to charge gadgets more quickly if you don't mind setting them atop a charging pad. Dell actually has a resonant charging pad that can put out 30 watts of power to charge one of its laptops, making it almost as fast as just having it plugged into the wall. Resonant induction is also being incorporated into a Mercedes sedan, where the car can just basically park over a coil in the ground and start charging without any need for those messy wires. But if you want distance charging that works efficiently across, say, an entire room, RF charging or infrared charging might be a better bet. You know how you can put power in your home using light waves from the sun, or how you can use microwaves to heat up last night's leftovers, except for pizza, because that's better cold? Well, they both work using similar principles except without the risk of sunburn or being boiled alive. RF uses lower frequency radio waves, like your existing Wi-Fi router, and can transmit just a few milliwatts of power. One company, Energis, is hoping that their own RF charger will catch on and is marketing to be able to charge at distances of up to 15 feet. But just like the light from a flashlight, RF charging attenuates. That is to say, it gets weaker over a distance. So placing a gadget near the edge of an RF charger's range means that you probably won't be getting enough power to charge your phone, although a smaller device like a keyboard or a smartwatch might be fair game. As for infrared charging, we actually collaborated with a company who is working on this tech, WeCharge, in a recent video, where they showed us that even though IR can be used to transmit more power, even several watts, making it suitable for distant smartphone charging, their handshake protocol stops transmission outright when it detects an obstacle, like a human hand or your eyeballs, which helped to get approved for organizations like UL and FDA. There's still a lot of progress that can be made. At this time, there aren't many devices that have the necessary receivers built in for either RF or IR, but if the technology matures, we may be headed to a much more wire-free world in the not so distant future. Hopefully Apple will build in support for one or both of these standards, giving others the courage to adopt them, and we'll start seeing compatible products on the market over the next few years. But until then, take a second to plug in your phone before bed. There's no telling what you might miss on if you don't. What you could be missing out on is Ting. Ting is the mobile carrier that is focused on customer service and customer satisfaction first. You don't speak to a robot and get put directly through to a person. With Ting, you only pay for what you use, with the average Ting bill being $23 a month per device. 
And if you're stuck in a contract and switch to Ting, they'll cover 25% of your cancellation fee up to $75. They're lowering their mobile data rates. Data is now just $10 per gigabyte beyond the second gigabyte. And every single Ting customer will be able to reap the benefits of this new change. So head over to techquickie.ting.com and try out their savings calculator. When you sign up at our link, you'll also get $25 in service credit or $25 towards a new device. So thanks for watching. Like, dislike, check out our other videos, but not channels. What are you doing, John? Are you just trying to sabotage LTT? Comment with video suggestions and don't forget to subscribe and follow.